starts right now. A neighborhood on edge tonight. Two shootings in two weeks have some neighbors on the south side asking when their home is next. Plus a makeup mock up how first responders in crisis training are making it look closer to the real thing than they ever have before. And care after crisis. A dozen migrants were found in a trailer off of I-35 last week and now we find out what happens after crews arrive. But first, some bizarre breaking news. A man is dead after San Antonio police say he was shot and killed by a man he had stabbed moments earlier. It all happening at an apartment complex on Pin Road just off Highway 90 a few hours ago. Police say a 67 year old man knocked on his 24 year old neighbor's door, stabbed him, then was shot dead by that man seconds later. Now, officers say this isn't the first time that they've been called for an incident between those two individuals. Investigators at the scene say they don't believe the man that was stabbed is going to be charged, but and detectives are going to interview him in the hospital to find out more about what led up to that confrontation. Out of heat and hidden migrants tonight, a closer look at how emergency crews help people that are hurting during this heat. Like last week when 12 migrants were found inside of a trailer on I-35. The night team's Avery Everett explains how EMS crews helped them. An emergency can happen in an instant. Every minute counts. And Dr. Brian Everett says this temp bag adds time to the clock. A vinyl bag that uh, we can put ice cold water around the patient and start to cool them. He related illnesses are on the rise this summer and Everett says this treatment is being used to help people in the community. We are very aggressive about putting these patients in these bags, uh, both pre hospital and in the hospital. Everett says this could be the key to saving lives, especially when people are under inhumane conditions. And if these patients are not found and cooled quickly, they will die. Just one week ago, 12 migrants were found cramped inside a trailer on I-30 near Fisher Road. EMS crews examined them and said they were okay. A relief because after learning about the migrants conditions inside the trailer, people were worried. The levels at which that we're staying in are, are, are unprecedented. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar says when his deputies respond to these incidents, they're prepared with one goal in mind. During the course of that interview, we try to find out where did you come from? What have you been through? Are you the victim of any crimes? But no matter where they came from, San Antonio often helps. And Councilwoman Adriana Rocha Garcia says this is becoming familiar in District 4. And that if that first exit to San Antonio is off of 35, it's gonna continue happening. <laughs> It's a humanitarian crisis at that moment. Everett says this isn't a solution, but it can be a lifesaver. We'll put about uh, about two inches or three inches of water on the patient. As these emergencies will likely keep happening. So we are ready to do this. Dr. Everett says these bags have been used inside of ambulances for about the past month, but they've been used inside of hospitals over the past couple of years. But if you can't get access to one of these and you see someone experiencing a heat related illness, doctors say the best thing to do is to get them under cold running water. Reporting live at the Medical Center, I'm Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Avery. A San Antonio family looking for a place to go after a fire took their home this afternoon. Bear Bulvity fire crews say that fire broke out just before four o'clock. Thankfully, nobody was home, but the house was destroyed. Look at it. Investigators haven't said if there were fire alarms inside that home and the fire marshal is investigating how it started. Now, you know, house fires are not the only thing keeping firefighters busy during this hotter than usual summer. Yeah, San Antonio firefighters busy checking hundreds of smoke alarms across the Alamo City. And there's a very important reason why firefighters say so many people are asking for smoke alarms. They're having trouble keeping up, so the department is asking for donations. This comes after five family members died on Saturday and one woman died in another house fire last night. She did not have a smoke detector. By the way, the citywide total for fire deaths, 12 so far this year. Now, Woody Woodard with the San Antonio Fire Department says that for the first time ever, the fire department is asking the public to donate smoke alarms. Now, here's the thing. They need to be new. The packaging needs to be untouched and you could drop them off at any fire station during business hours. We're receiving hundreds and hundreds of requests for um, smoke alarms and safety checks. And so it may take us a little bit longer to get out than usual. 
um, but we're going to get to these as quickly as we can. So if you want a firefighter to go and check your fire alarm, here's what you do. You dial 211. A 42-year-old man behind bars after undercover police say that he tried to meet up with someone who he thought was an underage girl. Now let's start here. Anthony Flores is charged with online solicitation of a minor after a San Antonio undercover operation say that Flores tried to meet up with a girl who he believed was 15 years old. He was arrested today on his way to work in Bernie and he's now being held at the Kendall County Jail. Two shootings in two weeks on the same street and neighbors don't think this is a coincidence and some residents say it's only a matter of time before their home is the next target. The night team's John Paul Baraja spoke on spoke with Southside neighbors and about their fears and what their security cameras have captured. Makes me very nervous that really I just I'm scared. Waking up to the sound of gunshots has left those who live off Oxana and Creek Place on edge. So much so that only one of the five neighbors we talked to would go on camera on the condition that we didn't show her face. I don't feel safe. I don't feel safe. That insecurity is after this drive by, the second shooting in 15 days. <laughs> on July 10th, there was a shootout between cars. Another angle from earlier that night shows the cars driving through people's yards as they continued shooting at each other as they made their way down the street. Get the cops over here. San Antonio police have shown up for both incidents looking for evidence. I, was thinking, I saw holes there, but it, it was like, it's like from the construction. Not much has turned up. Get her fine no, we're good. We're good, thank you. But neighbors tell us at least two cars have been hit. I don't know if they're ever going to stop unless they hurt somebody. They're doing that. They don't care. They don't care who they hurt. She says she replays the sounds of gunshots every night before going to bed. It was ba -ba 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 -ba. Now, San Antonio police say they are investigating both incidents as a discharged firearm and aggravated assault deadly conduct. This time, no arrests have been made, so they're asking anybody with information to call Crime Stoppers at 210 224 stop at public safety headquarters. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Thanks, John Paul. Now tonight, the focus was on families as KSAT aired a special on fentanyl. 2,000 people in Texas died last year to fentanyl poisoning. So tonight, our special went over the fentanyl problem, how it's affecting the state of Texas, law enforcement, and our communities. The goal here was to help you start a conversation with your family, your kids, about the deadly drug. Now, after the special aired, we also had a town hall. We spoke with a local psychiatrist and asked him to give parents advice. Start by asking what they know about fentanyl and what they know about drug use. Have they run into a situation that uh, um, they, they were presented with? And make them understand that this is not a lecture. This is meant as a, a, a family trying to preserve a family. Yeah, basically we should make teens and, and young people feel comfortable to come up and speak with us. Now our special is called Fighting Fentanyl. It's everyone's problem. You can watch that and the town hall discussion that we had afterwards. Just scan that QR code that you see on your screen. It'll take you right there. A teacher in Baytown has been fired after going to a drag show in Houston and then posting pictures on Facebook. Christy Maris was a teacher at First Baptist Academy in Baytown for 19 years. According to the school's senior pastor, Maris violated the school's operating policies manual. Maris says she agreed to the guidelines but didn't realize she was breaking them by going to a drag show. They're entertainers. No, I would have never thought in a million years that this would have happened. Never. I mean, we were in disbelief. I mean, we still are. I mean, we're heartbroken. You know, we had relationships with parents and, and the kids. And uh, I didn't even get to say bye to a lot of the kids. One of Maris's co-workers also fired for attending that same drag show. She says she's done with teaching for now. Over to Cedar Hill, just outside of Dallas, police are investigating after a doctor was shot inside of a clinic. So this happened yesterday afternoon. People there, the people who saw it, say that a man with a rifle walked into the clinic and just shot the doctor. 
When officers arrived, police say the suspect was driving away from the clinic. Then moments later, the suspect crashed into another vehicle. The Cedar Hill police chief says that once officers got to the crash site, they then shot the suspect. There were multiple officers on scene of the crash. They observed the suspect inside the vehicle with a long gun and the officers discharged their firearm. When they start shooting, I start crawling back into the store here where I work at. Now, again, that happened yesterday afternoon. The suspect was taken to a hospital in critical condition. Now, the doctor who was shot, he's expected to recover. Cedar Hill police are now trying to find a motive, though, for the shooting. Another triple digit day, 101 the high temperature officially at the airport today. That marks our 31st 100 degree day so far this year. Del Rio topped out at 105, Catula up to 107. And it's no surprise that this triple digit trend is going to continue. 100 to 102 for high temperatures for at least the next seven days. You may have noticed that African dust overhead. We're going to talk about that, its relation to air quality, and even an update on the tropics in just a bit. We want those injuries to look as real as possible so that way they can practice and they can respond to that event as if it were a real life event. A makeup artists and other volunteers are doing their part to help first responders get ready for the worst. You're going to see that up next. Fresh bullet wounds, bruises, flesh and blood. Yeah, it sounds like we're talking about a horror movie, right? But we're not. It's also what makeup artists and volunteers are creating to train first responders. Tonight team's Patty Santos tells us how a free class is part of the larger plan to give police and medics the best chance to train for real life disasters. And now you have sear marks. Using a little Vaseline, tissue paper, and makeup, Anthony Saldovar is introducing these volunteers to the art of casting, also known as moulage. What will happen once I'm done with this, I'll be able to open this up to expose more skin underneath. Silicone. Volunteers will use their practice skills during upcoming mass casualty training exercises for first responders across South Texas. And our first responders will know what they're dealing with. Now, it's pretty gory, but that's the point. It's to shock first responders. It allows the doctors to think in those situations because they're, they're visually cued by what they see. And so it allows them to think through how they would treat a patient with that type of wound. Angela Morgan with the Emergency Preparedness Division of the Southwest Texas Regional Advisory Council, or STRAC, helps coordinate the free basic moulage training class. They're volunteers from different walks of life. Um, some of them are first responders themselves. This is the burn scar right here. But Also in this class are medical providers, even mortuary students like Hannah Shea. So this would be entrance pretty small and then an exit wound. Which is it took her about 40 minutes to create a bullet wound on her first session. Sure, it's gross and like no one wants to think about it and be horrible if something ever did happen. But the fact that we do have the resources to have us be the best prepared that we can be is super important. Now your makeup wedges, these are going to be the best thing to apply the latex. Volunteers say no one wants to think about a mass crisis, but it's important to support those who will see it. Once the fluid is introduced, blood is introduced, it makes the first responders on the exercise think a lot quicker and a lot more effectively because of how visceral the wounds can be with what the artists do here for them. Amazing. That was Patty Santos reporting. So I know some of you just watched that and you're thinking, can I learn to do that too? You can. STRAC has about 40 people on their volunteer list, but they need more because they help train so many agencies across South Texas. You can click on our story on KSAT.com to see how to get plugged in to the next class. Moulage. Yeah, we got Moulage. To that. All right, now, now let's take a live look outside. 90 degrees out there. Yeah, pretty hot considering it's 1017. But here's the thing. A lot of us have been focused on that African dust. But you're saying, Adam, that mm -hmm. really it's not a reason. If, if you're complaining about allergies, no, nah, that's probably not it. Yeah, it's, it doesn't seem like it's really affecting us much. It's suspended higher in the air. And even you look at the air quality. So if you have asthma, the air quality is what it would typically be and is not out of the ordinary for this time of year. Take a look at our chart. And today, all of our sensors were reading moderate, which is the first step down from good. 
and then you get into the unhealthy categories thereafter. We expect it to be pretty much the same again tomorrow. Here's actually a live look at those sensors placed around Bear County and San Antonio, and they're all in the yellow. The only better you can get is green. And so they're basically at the typical levels for this time of year and even this time of day. Let's take a look at the dust. This is our computer model with the dust overhead light to moderate amounts up there. So if you look off into the distance from a high vantage point, say a flyover ramp, 410, 1604, you know what I mean? Uh, then you'll see some of that extra haze, but looking straight up, you don't see quite as much. It's gonna dissipate starting on Friday and then be completely out of here throughout the day on Saturday. So by this weekend, it's that extra haze will be gone. It does make our sunrises and sunsets a little more vibrant. As for rain, we had a few coastal showers. This is the trend. It's going to continue to be the trend closer to the Gulf coastline. They crept into Quero and DeWitt County and especially just south of Quero earlier today. But I want to talk about the big picture, the upper level high, the heat high. It's centered over the Four Corners region in the desert southwest there, basically over northern New Mexico. So this we have this northeasterly flow aloft. The door is open for a disturbance. And there's one over the Gulf. That's going to head our way. It's going to be a little too far to the south of us, and we don't have the other ingredients, instability and moisture to help kickstart some showers and storms. So the doors open, have a little energy, a little boost from the upper atmosphere, but it's, we don't have everything else to turn it into anything good. As we get into next week, especially this time next week, that upper high is going to plant itself over Mississippi and Louisiana, and that means the steering flow is coming off the Gulf of Mexico and that if anything moves into the tropics and into the Gulf, there's a chance that we could get some moisture from it. Right now, the tropics are pretty quiet. Way out there, closer to Africa, 40% chance of development from that wave that's headed westward, and that's 40% chance over the next five days. We'll keep an eye on it, but nothing to worry about or even hope for moisture from at this point. Tomorrow morning, 78 degrees at 7 a.m., a lot of sunshine. 100 for the high temperature, a southeasterly wind at 5 to 15. And it notice our high temperatures all across the board will be right around 100. Floresville, Poth, 101, Nixon Smiley, 101, Hondo, Sabinal, and Uvalde, 99. Now the key is the afternoon dew points will be falling in, at, enough that the heat index is not going to be an issue during the hottest part of the day. That's the nice thing. But you look at our trend, and right now we don't have any rain chances. If we're lucky with that shift in the upper high, we might be able to add a few pop-up showers and storms around the middle of next week. We'll keep right. you updated. All right. Thank you, Adam. All right. To Cowboys camp right now where there is one happy cornerback. Ooh, man, if you're good, you can really make some money, can't you? Yeah. Yeah. This guy's got a lot of money coming his way. One big smiling face at Cowboys camp because he is rich. Larry Ramirez with the soon-to-be $100 million man in camp. And a Pac-12 team now wants to be a Big 12 team. Coming up after the break. Important news if you are pregnant or thinking about having a baby. Medical experts say you should be extra careful. Cancer-causing chemicals may be in the places you least suspect. That's tomorrow on GMSA starting at 4.30. Do you think that you're at the top of your game? Or Hell no. <laughs> I'm just starting, literally. Trayvon Diggs keeping the bar high for himself, even with the new contract and guaranteed money. It is time to go camping with KSAT. Camping with KSAT, powered by Davis Law Firm. Cowboys were on the field for their first practice of camp this morning in Oxnard. Temperatures perfect, mid midday in the upper 70s. Not perfect, the offense. Yes, Dak Prescott had an interception today, but it would be hard to count it against him since it went right through the hands of a receiver and into the arms of a defender, so... It is day one. Speaking of defenders, the Cowboys have one of the best defensive backs in the league and Trayvon Diggs. He is so good. Dallas extended his contract five years and is going to pay him around $100 million. Larry Ramirez has more on the payday and how Diggs has to continue to earn it. It is a great week for Cowboys cornerback Trayvon Diggs. He is thrilled that training camp is here, and he is beyond happy and thankful that the Dallas Cowboys believe in him enough to reward him with a huge contract extension. I think the Cowboys, you know, trust in what I bring to the table, what I bring to the field. Um, I trust what I bring to the table, what I bring to the field, so I feel like we're on the same page. So, And because they are on the same page, Diggs got a huge contract extension. A proud moment for Trayvon, a son, brother, and a father himself. Yeah, I was extremely, you know, proud. You know, I, I was crying on my way to Oxnard, like on the plane. Um, 
I was just extremely happy and when I caught him, my mom, he was with my mom and they was just extremely happy. So it was just, you know, it just made me feel good, you know, made me feel like, you know, a proud father just being able to be able to take care of my family, take care of my son, take care of my mom. So, you know, that's just always been the main goal. Diggs has plenty of goals on the field, like learning from veteran corner Stephon Gilmore, a player he really looks up to. I feel like, you know, he's just very professional, you know, just how he goes about his work, you know, it's like rubbed off on me. Like he's waking up at six o'clock every day. You know, so now I want to wake up at six o'clock every day and go get a workout with him and do little stuff like that. He eats perfect. Like he doesn't do nothing. He doesn't eat foolishness. He see me eating gummy snacks. He'd be like, what are you, are you eating that? No gummy worms for real. Talk about the sacrifices to be great. Well, it's really paying off for digs. David, back to you. Yeah, you can buy a lot of gummy worms though. All right, so here's your schedule tomorrow. 1.30 practice our time. Friday, a little noon walk through to one strain any muscles or anything, so we're just going to walk around on Friday. Then Saturday, it's a big opening ceremony. Then we'll have a practice after that. Sunday, live right here at KSAT at 12, Jerry Jones will be joining our own Larry Ramirez. And then Monday, the first practice in pads. Finally get some hitting going on. Coming up, so what do you know? Video games actually do make you better. We'll explain after the break. Well, the Houston Texans got on the practice field this morning, bright and early at 9 o'clock. Seems like this has been a theme around Houston. New year, new coach. D'Amico Ryans has started his era as the head coach. At least he has a lot of young talent to coach. Starting with second-year defensive back Jalen Petrie, the former Baylor Bear, had 147 tackles as a rookie. One sack, five picks, and eight passes defended. He got good with a lot of hard work and some time on the couch with a controller in his hand. He says playing Madden with teammate Derek Stingley Jr. has helped him improve those cover skills. Believe it or not, a lot of the route concepts, really all of the route concepts that um, these NFL teams are running is on the game. So when you're playing around and you're picking these plays, like these are plays that these offensive coordinators are picking. Obviously, you know, their knowledge of the game is a lot further than us, but um, these are the same plays. So if you continue to see that, you continue to put that in your mind, then when you get out onto the field and you start seeing it, it's going to just start to click and click. So I think it's just a good uh, a good rep for you to just get on Madden and just look at stuff because it's, it's obviously fun too. So now everybody's going to do it. This is what gets the Cowboys' Zach Martin excited. The Texans just signed offensive lineman Titus Howard to a three-year extension worth $56 million. Includes $36 million guaranteed. It was the first round pick of the Texans back in 2019. So here's a look at their schedule tomorrow. They'll practice at 9 a.m. in the morning. Then Friday, their first open practice to fans. Saturday, it's a day off Sunday, 9 a.m. practice. And then Monday, once again, practice at 9 a.m. All right, since the Pac-12 lost USC and UCLA, other teams have been looking for a new conference, especially since they left over the Pac-12 teams have not been able to sign a television deal. So the Colorado Buffaloes are ready to stampede right back to the Big 12. That's according to ESPN. They are expected to meet and vote tomorrow on making a move. If that goes through, they will apply to the Big 12. They were in the Big 12 from 1996 to 2010. How much fun would it be to have Deion Sanders and his team hanging out in Texas for a few games, huh? That'd be fun. All right, FIFA Women's World Cup tonight. USA and the Netherlands, both squads won their opening matches from over the weekend. 17th minute, Jill Roard of right foot from the center of the box, Netherlands up 1-0 all the way to halftime. 62nd minute, USA with the corner kick and Lindsey Horan with the header. It's got to hurt. It's got to hurt. That tied the game. So let's see the final. Here it is. Tied up at 1-1. No winners, no losers. USA had their chances. They had, oh, yeah, especially in the second half, a lot of them. Yeah. Right. Thanks, David. Hmm? And we'll be right back after this. Our July is running a good five degrees above average. We've had now 19 100 degree days so far this month. We're going to keep adding to that as the month gradually comes to a close. Anywhere from 100 to 102 for highs going forward. And we have to get through August. All right. Well, have a fabulous night. Please stay cool. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night.